Well, Greg, uh, if there was any doubts as to Mike Riley's future, it certainly was settled on the field Friday at Memorial Stadium. Yeah, there wasn't really much doubt. You look out there in the second half, particularly the fourth quarter, you see all those empty seats. It made Bill Moose's job pretty easy. And as we heard Bill Moose say Saturday at the press conference, he really started to think about this when he watched the, the meltdown in Minneapolis. Yeah and saw that thing go south, and and he put it perfectly when he said that was a game that you felt like Nebraska should win, and they go up there and not only didn't win, got just demolished. So, you know, I think Nebraska fought for a half Friday, and then once Iowa kind of got on top of Nebraska, there was, quite frankly, there was a lot of quit in the team, and that's, that's disappointing, and that comes back to, Coach has not been able to keep a team locked in and fight all the way through, and, and thus the change, the change is being made. Yeah, and I, and I was going to say, Greg, because you were very good at pointing out after the Minnesota game, it's not that you lose a game. It's when you go out there and essentially your effort gets called into question. That's a huge red flag. No question. I mean, if, if a coach can't keep a team to fight through a game, and, and there are games where in days that it's just not your day, mm-hmm. And the other team maybe is clearly better, and I'm thinking about Ohio State a little bit here. Uh, but Minnesota, that should not have happened. And you just look at what the Gophers have done since that game. <laughs> they haven't. They weren't really competitive in their next couple of games. And yet, on that day, they just blasted Nebraska. And I think it became pretty clear to Bill Moose, we got to move on, and i got I got to get the, everything lined up. i got to start putting my ducks in a row and getting the process started to, to find the new football coach in Nebraska and that's where we are. And, and you know, I, I've had a lot of people say, boy, I'm sure, sure you're going to miss being around Coach Riley. And, I, and I, my, my answer to that is, yeah, I, I enjoyed my time, spending my time and getting to know the man and that. But I'm not going to miss watching his teams play yeah. because it's been, quite frankly, very hard to do that, even more than just the last couple of weeks, really for the entire three years. And it's interesting, Greg, because it's only been three years, and yet – this program is in a completely different place now than it was when Coach Pelini was let go at the end of the 2014 season. Night and day. And Matt, Matt pointed that out on our broadcast a couple of different times on Friday. He just goes, I can't believe how far we have fallen in three years. Because, you know, the last game Bo Pelini coached, it was that thrilling overtime come from behind win at Iowa to get to 9-3, and three, get a holiday bowl bid to play a really talented USC team, and, and then Bo was let go and that, that staff coached that bowl game, and that was a very enter- entertaining and competitive bowl game. I think Nebraska lost 40, 45-42 if memory serves. But it was a terrific game against a really talented USC team that the next year uh, was, was in the Rose Bowl. So, it, yeah, it, it, it has fallen way down. I, I think the, the thing to, to tell Husker fans is that Programs like Nebraska can get off the deck quickly. They can piece it back together with the right staff and the right combination of things, leadership and all those things. They can get this thing back on track in a hurry and get back to where they're competing for a West Division title and and ultimately a Big Ten championship. So that's kind of been my message the last 48 hours to Husker fans is, okay, it's low right now, there's no doubt but we can get this thing back in the right direction in a hurry if we make the right moves here in the coming week. But I'll ask you the same question we asked three years ago. Does Nebraska, does this program still command the same respect that it once did in terms of getting an upper echelon coach? No, it doesn't. I mean, it, Nebraska's brand has been tarnished. Yeah. And Bill Moose pointed that out at his press conference Saturday. It's been tarnished, but because you've had a brand in the past, you can get it back. You have to, but you have to make the right steps, put the effort, the time, and the energy into all that to get it there. But it, there's no doubt it's been tarnished because it's been well since '99 since they've won a conference title. They've not really been a part of the discussions for this playoff since it went into effect a couple of years ago. They never made a, uh, they didn't make a BCS bowl since 2001. So yeah, it, it's been tarnished. But there are other programs that have been in this boat before that have been able to fight their way back. And so that's the challenge ahead of Bill Moose here in this week, to to identify somebody who he believes can put this thing back together and get Nebraska back to a level of prominence that they once so uh, 
so thoroughly enjoyed. Was there a lesson learned in the Mike Riley hiring in terms of the type of coach that maybe Nebraska doesn't want to bring in next time around, a guy that's been around the block several years that maybe is in the tail end of his career and has had some ups and downs, and as opposed to a guy who's up and coming that maybe doesn't have the established resume but still could give a program some longevity and something to build off of? Yeah, I think that I think there's a lot to that. And then there's not. I'm not here to say that you couldn't go get a 60 year old head coach, mm-hmm. a guy who's had some success in the past. My whole thought with, with and worry with with Coach Riley all along was there wasn't really a high level of degree at any point in time in his coaching tenure. Very well respected man, but never really wanted a high level. Mm-hmm. Wanted a, what people said was a really good level for Oregon State, but didn't win at a high level like. I'm not saying Les Miles' name is, is out there for Nebraska because I really haven't heard that name, but look, let's take Les Miles. Mm-hmm. If somebody were to look at him, he's won national championships. He's won at the highest level of football, and he's of about the same age as Mike Riley. Well, there'd be a guy that you could go, okay, well, he has been to that mountaintop. Mike Riley never got to a mountaintop ever in his coaching career, and yet Nebraska kind of took a chance and a flyer on him three years ago. It was a puzzling hire, and anybody who's in position of management uh, knows that you make bad hires. I mean, you, you yeah. take a gamble on something and you make bad hires, and that, that's what this was. And, you know, Mike's a good guy and a nice man and, and did a lot of things to, re- you know, to, to represent the program right the right way, but it wasn't going to work and it didn't work, and now Nebraska's got to kind of put the pieces back together. You talked about the candor of Bill Moose. I'll raise another point. Were you surprised how candidly he spoke about his desire to get Scott Frost or at least talk to Scott Frost? How how refreshing was that whole press conference? Yeah. With Bill Moose. I mean, you talk about a pro's pro. He handled everything brilliantly on Saturday. And, and I'll go back just to the way he handled this whole thing in the last couple of weeks. He said when he got hired in early October or mid-October, I, I'm not a fan of changing coaches midseason. And he stuck to that, even though there was a ton of pressure for him to pull the plug on this thing, even maybe going back to that Minnesota game that we talked about earlier. So he stuck to his word on that. But then... He got right to work the next day after the Iowa game had ended, brought Mike in, told Mike, I've made my decision, we're going a different direction. He met with the staff, told them the same things, brought the team together, those that had stayed in town, I think there's about 70% of them were still around, told them what he was going to do, let Mike address the team, which was a big thing that didn't happen three years ago Mm -hmm. with Bo Pelini. He was not allowed to address the team, and thus they had to put the, the impromptu thing together at a local high school for him to say goodbye to his team. So Bill Moose handled everything perfectly. And then his demeanor, his words in the press conference were spot on. And the fact that he's been doing some legwork the last couple of weeks is exactly what he should be doing. I mean, he, he, uh, I mean, I am so pleased that he is running this whole thing. And I, again, go back to the, uh, the chancellor and the president. I have such great confidence in them and that they hired a great AD in Bill Moose who I think is going to hire, in turn, a great head coach for Nebraska. And, and to go back to the issue of, of firing a coach midseason or with a few games left, a lot of times you'll do that if there's a guy on the staff that perhaps you're grooming for the job and you want to see how he's going to do. I don't really know if there's anybody on this staff that's going to be given serious consideration for this job. Do you? No, none. None. And, you know, you look at Florida. Florida dismisses Jim McElwain, mm-hmm. what, three weeks ago, and, and it looks like they've got their guy today in Dan Mullen, but... Did they really, I mean, did, did that really give them a huge head yeah. start? Not, not really. Uh, you know, UCLA quickly was able to go after Chip Kelly, who was unemployed, or at least not working on the coaching profession. So, yeah, you could go talk to him. But I, I just don't know that you get a big head start on that. Yeah, you get your name out there and people know your job's open. But I think most people have known Nebraska's job was going to be open for a couple weeks as well. So i uh, just really pleased with what Bill Moose and how candid he was at that press conference. I had people texting me during the press conference going, this is unbelievable. I can't believe he's being this open about everything right now. And I'm like, yep, but he's a very you know, transparent guy, and I think that certainly came across. So what is your gut telling you on a timetable? Well, I don't think there's any question that Scott Frost is the, is the number one candidate for this job for Nebraska. And so Scott has a game to coach on Saturday. Uh, in the American Athletic Conference championship game as UCF will play Memphis. So I think Nebraska is is probably talking to some other people this week that might be on their list to kind of gauge their interest. But I think Scott Frost is their number one candidate. And they're going to wait till that game ends and then uh, make a phone call, uh, maybe have a, some kind of a sit-down somewhere, whether it's in Orlando or they meet at a neutral site, 
I think that happens. My guess is we'll have something probably by this time next week on a Monday. I think that's probably when uh, I would guess Nebraska will have a head coach uh, in, in seven days. But I don't think you'll see much until that game takes place because I think they clearly have identified him as a guy they want to talk to. 